Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. It's been a while but we are taking a look at an absolutely amazing game and uh, the engines have got a huge amount to say about it. It's the game between Elina Rubers and uh, Erwin Lamy. Played at the Tata Steel Challengers uh, round two. Uh, feels like years ago but actually it's just uh, um, a couple of weeks ago. Um, a very interesting game, interesting opening concept from, uh, from Erwin, uh, an unusual line called the uh, Accelerated Brea in the Rai Lopez. And then uh, at some stage, a very, very controversial uh, positional decision. Um, but yeah, one that uh, when you analyze it with engines, you start to wonder, you know, uh, is, um, is my intuitive reaction really the good one? Or maybe had uh, Erwin seen a lot more? Um, however, I think it was quite a difficult position to handle, you know, whatever the objective merits of it. And uh, Elena won a fine game when Erwin stumbled. But um, uh, a very interesting game and, uh, well, really says a lot about uh, strategy and maybe, yeah, how we should try and understand it a little differently. So the opening, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop b5, a6, bishop a4, knight f6. Good to see. A normal Rai Lopez. No Berlin, no Marshall Gambit, just the good old-fashioned uh, Breyer. And, uh, well, I mean, um, if you look at the situation in the tournament, uh, Elena had lost her first game. Um, just a rather unpleasant uh, loss with Black against uh, the young Indian player, uh, Mishra. And um, Erwin had somehow managed to hold a draw in the first game. So I think both players were really, you know, looking to get going. And I guess that... Uh, uh, Elena was obviously looking for some pressure as white, and I guess that Erwin was looking to keep tension in the game, make it a long manoeuvring game, don't let uh, you know the young player show her uh, attacking prowess, and uh, yeah, you know, hopefully outplay in a positional game. And uh, this opening is um, is pretty good for both players, really. I think um, uh, d4, knight bd7, knight bd2, and now a really interesting idea here, c5. So I've only seen this line before in uh, Victor Bolligan's book, which is called Bolligan's Rai Lopez. Not a bad book, in fact. Um, he called it in chapter 34, the accelerated Brea. And uh, the point is that um, Black normally plays the, uh, the bishop to b7. And, um, well, here Black is playing the move c5. And uh, the essential idea is that if White plays uh, d4 to d5, then um, Black hasn't actually committed the bishop to um, uh, to this square where it just um, looks at this um, uh, this pawn on uh, on d5 so um, yeah that bishop can go to a more useful square later like uh, d7 for example so that's the idea of the line um, uh, Bolligan says that uh, the uh, the drawback to it is that white can play knight f1 um, without having to play uh, bishop c2 first to uh, defend the e4 pawn. Obviously, that's different after bishop b7. If white wants to play this typical Lopez manoeuvre, knight f1 to, um, uh, to g3, then you have to play bishop c2 first to cover this uh, um, e4 pawn. Um, however, I'm not 100% sure that that's, um, that's the case because, well, I mean, you know, even in the game, we see that Alina played bishop c2. It's a, it's a useful move to play. Um, I think it's more that, uh, you know, when black develops quickly with um, uh, with bishop b7, rook e8, um, and then um, bishop f8, then black's often ready to play a very quick d6 to d5. You often see it in uh, games of the great Brea player uh, by uh, Boris, Ka Boris Baski, you know, who uh, uh, you often see this, this very quick break. So, you know, that's really what black's threatening with, uh, with bishop b7. When you play the move uh, c5, yeah, you, you're not really going to be able to do that. I mean, what you really want to try and do, force white to play d5 and then play, uh, you know, c4 and uh, knight c5. And then afterwards, maybe put your bishop to d7. And you'll just claim that you've, uh, you've sort of uh, saved time by keeping the bishop on c8. So knight f1 was, uh, was played by white um, and now rook e8. So black still, you know, playing sensible moves, but not developing that bishop to b7. Knight to g3, and now bishop f8. Um, actually, quite an interesting uh, moment here. Um, I mean, one idea could be to uh, to play the move queen c7. Just interested me because uh, I thought you might sort of play it a bit Philidor style, you know, and play the move knight f8, either to uh, to g6 or maybe even to e6. You know, aiming for this um, uh, f4 square. 
Um, yeah, and uh, I mean, I just put it on um, on uh, on Leela. Uh, just put on Leela it was uh, 105 million nodes, which for Leela is quite a bit. And uh, well, Leela just came up with um, with this line: uh, Bishop d7, Knight h4, Knight e6, d5, Knight f4, Knight f3, h6, which seemed uh, you know quite reasonable for uh, for Black really. So yeah, Queen c7 might be interesting. But I mean, Bishop f8 is a very normal Brea move, and you know, absolutely nothing wrong with it. It's just a, a choice of plans really. Um, just bear in mind as well that um, you know because you've played c5, if um, if White ever goes knight g5, you can always just play c4 just to um, uh, just to block the uh, the line of the bishop there. Here are an important decision. Um, yeah, Elena played uh, bishop c2, which uh, well, if you're thinking about Bolligan, you sort of say, oh well, that's worked out quite well for Black, and uh, I don't think it's the most uh, accurate move. Um, I would have been very tempted to play the move um, bishop e3, to be honest. Uh, that's just uh, maintaining the centre, but still, you know, keeping this bishop, you know, vaguely dreaming of uh, of hitting f7. Um, the, the key point is that after e takes d4, c takes d4, you can't take on e4 because after takes takes, well, I don't know, I've got I've got loads, haven't I? I can go bishop d5, I've also got knight g5, I've got bishop takes f7 check as well, followed by knight g5, so, you know, I've got a lot of possibilities there. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the engines were playing um, uh, h6 in this position, um, and, uh, well, yeah, you know, sort of uh, interesting position. Engines seemed to feel that, um, that, uh, that black was fine, but, uh, yeah, it's definitely an idea. Um, Stockfish was playing uh, d5, you know, uh, just uh, releasing the central tension. But then, you know, Black can claim just this opening victory of uh, having teased out d5 and uh, a number of plans. I like this one very much. Just knight b6, bishop b3, a5. This was what Dragon was doing. a4, and then bishop d7. You know, the bishop heading directly for uh, for d7 there. And then after knight d2, queen c7, a3, g6. I think Black's got a, you know, just a, a very nice Brea there, really. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, nothing wrong with it, uh, really. You know, again, always <laughs> slightly hard to think, you know, how is black really going to um, uh, to play for the win uh, in this sort of position? You're kind of, you know, holding white back. But still, you know, I think I think this is a very interesting system, uh, you know, this uh, this uh, accelerated Brea that, uh, that Erwin uh, chose there. Um, and another move that uh, Dragon was very keen on was A4. And actually, well, I mean, there's, there's various things. I mean, you could just... Uh, um, um, you know, try and keep the tension with um, with rook b8. That's possible. Um, but um, actually, in this position, the engines were tending to play this line, um, which you may recognise because we're basically back into a normal Brea. <coughs> um, but we've actually, you know, cut out an awful lot of white alternatives. So yeah, you know, this is uh, maybe just a, a very interesting line for Black with a, a few cunning move orders. Um, you know, the engines. Uh, well, Lila says it as uh, about 0 0.20 after 106 million nodes so yeah you know that's that's not so so great for white it's just a very slight advantage so and you know it's a major theoretical line well elena played uh, bishop c2 and here um actually uh Bolligan in his book recommends something very very sensible uh, and it's actually the the engine main move as well um Bolligan wanted to just take take and go e takes d4 um, with the idea of if knight takes d4, uh, you could even just play d6 to d5 and clear the centre. And actually, this is just completely equal for, uh, um, yeah, I mean, white's got a tiny initiative, but it's it's not anything at all. Um, so, I, I mean, I think bishop f4 from, uh, from uh, white is better because the idea then is that you can meet d5 with e5. But okay, I mean, I go uh, uh, bishop b7. You know, the bishop comes to b7 now that the centre is open. It's got this, uh, you know, a channel against uh, e4 and knight d4 g6 queen d2 queen b6 pretty typical positions and you know i, th I think that black should be absolutely fine in this position uh, slight advantage as always for white but uh, you know plenty of play against e4 and uh, yes you know uh, d6 is um, is weak but then so is e4 as well so uh, you know it'd be quite surprising if you managed to uh, to win the d6 pawn without losing the e4 pawn in return you know, have I, I imagine that this wasn't quite what Erwin was looking for because, you know, the chances of um, uh, of getting liquidation uh, and really, you know, complete equality are quite high. And, uh, well, I do think that, you know, from the opening, it's fair to say that, you know, Erwin was aiming for a, a complicated, long, drawn-out game. Um, so he chose uh, a different idea. Um, I mean, I was quite keen in this position. Um, 
G6 looked looked very sensible to me because you know you, you uh, th- this bishop always goes to uh, to G7 in the Brea and you're also stopping the knight coming into F5 and you're also you know keeping this uh, this bishop at home and and waiting to see and um yeah you know um if you uh, if white goes D5 then I go knight B6 and uh, you know pretty much what we were uh, looking at and if you go A4 Bishop b7, d5. We're still transposing into uh, a normal mainline Brea. You know, with uh, with this move, uh, uh, g6 having been played, it's a normal Brea move. And you know, my engine games were were you know proceeding quite equally from uh, from there. So you know, again, that that looked like a very sensible move to me. But somehow throughout the game, Ervin really tried to avoid g6 until the very last moment. So you know, I think he had a clear idea of what he wanted, and uh, yeah, that was just one thing that he was going to avoid. He had his uh, his uh, his typical uh, developing scheme and he you know he uh, he was going to stick to that so he played queen c7 um bishop b3 uh, which is also dragon's choice in uh, this position just keeping the central tension um you know why i was just trying to think actually you know why did uh, Erwin play the move uh, queen c7 um you know, rather than g6 and, and i was just thinking that um i think that he was always thinking that after d5 he wanted to play c4 the engines as we can see don't always think this is necessary yeah? they're looking at plans like uh, like knight b6 as well but i think Erwin wanted to play uh, c4 and basically he didn't want to give white the chance to go b4 here not possible because a queen takes c3 but of course you know if you'd gone uh, g6 rather than queen c7 then you know that might have been possible so uh you know yeah i mean it's quite these are quite tricky decisions really and uh, you know part of it is really that um you know black uh, as a black player you decide on a scheme of development and you stick to it and you know you, you could think of different solutions and you know the engines are seeing you know 0.02 or 0.03 plus or minus in some choices but you know probably it doesn't make that much difference it's just a, a choice but yeah at some stage you've got to be alert this is the only move to be honest this is the only move really of uh, Ervin's that I that I might criticize um bishop b7 because you know yeah black's really avoided playing this this bishop b7 move throughout the whole opening so just to do it now and then um you know white goes d5 and says ha ha I've won the opening battle you know you were trying to avoid bishop b7 and you know fearing d5 and now you've played bishop b7 and I've gone d5 um, yeah, I mean, um, uh, G6, again, you know, would have been um, uh, a move that I would have been uh, quite interested in. Um, knight B6 is also quite uh, quite interesting there. You know, Knight D2, we go A5, and we're doing our standard stuff again. Bishop D3, Bishop D7, uh, B3, A4. Oh, yeah, there was a really, there was a, quite a fun game played in this line between uh, Stockfish and Dragon. I'll just uh, show it to you. So um, B4 played A3. So, you know, I mean, actually, um, a Dragon fighting really hard here to keep some life in the Queen side, not letting White block the Queen side, but really keeping some life in it. And it works quite well. BC Knight A4. Very nice move. Unexpected move. Uh, the Knight's uh, aiming either for, for C3 or for B2. Um, so Knight F3 played. E takes D4. D takes C4. Takes Knight B2. Queen C2. Bishop C6. And... Uh, yeah, quite a lot of counterplay here, really, here really for uh, for Black. I mean, we've got uh, uh, the pressure against the um, uh, the e4 pawn. This knight's quite annoying. I mean, it's attacking that bishop on d3, of course. Um, it's also stopping uh, a rook coming to d1. Um, so bishop d4, knight d7. Black, you know, happy to uh, to give up this uh, this uh, this knight, give up a pawn because we'll we'll take back on c5 after. Um, um, Bishop e2, and now the knight withdraws. Always tough moves to spot with uh, uh, with white. But, you know, the bishop's gone away. It's no longer a target. So black's actually uh, lining up on this c5 pawn. And the game gets quite exciting. e5 takes, knight g5, g6, rook d1, bishop e7, knight e4, takes, takes, knight e6. And, uh, yeah, black was doing pretty well with defending, really. And, uh, yeah, you know this this uh, this rook's pawn all that moved all the way up here. It, it gives Black some uh, you know some hope of uh, of counterplay, and Dragon held it you know quite nicely afterwards. So, yeah, you know quite uh, quite an interesting line there. Um, so yeah, Knight B six quite uh, quite interesting. I think another main line that the engines also were looking at was uh, was A five straight away. Um, you know, which again is quite uh, quite decent, and also maybe with the idea of playing knight b6 and then playing the bishop to a6, you know, to uh, to support uh, some general queenside advance. You know, so uh, yeah, pretty interesting, pretty 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 good too.
But yeah, B Aaron's bishop b7 sort of makes me, you know, feel a bit upset really uh, because it uh, feels like I've, uh, you know, I've sort of given up the opening battle. Um, d5 and c4. So, I mean, I think that white has reached a pretty good version of the Brea here, really, because I think, you know, if you look at most of the lines of the Brea where um, black has got the bishop on b7 um, and um, uh, and he's played, you know, we've got this c4, uh, d5 uh, structure in the center. Um, I think white's normally played the move a2 to a4 in this position. And it just means that when black's knight comes to c5, then it's not only aiming for d3 and attacking e4, it's also attacking um, b3 as well. Um, and also, um, I have to say, also attacking the, uh, the pawn on a4. So black's got plenty of, um, of life on the queen side, you have the feeling. Whereas... Um, um, since white hasn't played a4, it can just be, you know, feel a little bit tougher for uh, for black to get going on the queen side. And uh, I mean, I do think, I think the engines at this moment do think that white is um, um, a fair amount better uh, because um, after uh, the move knight f5, um, well, we, we're seeing some wins for white in the engine game. So, you know, that's normally a good indication that, um, uh, yeah, you know, that uh, the white has got some definite initiative. Um, Got to explain why um, why they don't like uh, Elena's move in the game, uh, Knight H2. It's a very natural and typical Lopez move, and I might even have played it just automatically. But the key point is is that the engines actually prefer this knight to come to D2, where it defends the pawn on E4 um, against any attack from the um, uh, from the knight on C5. Also attacks the um, uh, the C4 pawn here. So uh, if ever Black was to try and get some counterplay with uh, with B5 to B4. Um, yeah, and apart from that, just you know, uh, enables uh, um, enables White's queen to come into the game, just like Knight H two. But it's it's just better place than on H two. So, yeah, you know, after Knight F five, let's just show you a typical game: A five, G four, Knight C five, Knight D two, G six, Knight H six, King H eight, A four. This is the game uh, Dragon against um, uh, Stockfish, and uh, Dragon played it quite beautifully, I have to say. Yeah, so typical of engines, you know, just to, to play over the whole board. You know, you've made some gains here with a knight on h6, and now you're undermining this um, this pawn on the c4, which, by the way, is attacked by that knight on d2. So obviously, you know, the reasons, you know, obviously that the engines like to defend e4 with a knight on d2, but, you know, the key point about having the knight being able to come to d2 and not putting it on the side on h2 is that it can take part in the whole struggle. You know, it can, it adds uh, breadth to White's play, really. And, uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, there's one thing that we can really learn from engines nowadays. It's this sort of strategy, you know, and, uh, um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's just always makes beautiful sense, you know, uh, when you, when you see it. I mean, now the game got really tactical because, uh, you know, Stockfish just uh, really, you know, started, um, well, essentially asking White to say, OK, you've, uh, you're playing over the whole board. You think you can manage it? Um, and, you know, it, it, so things are sort of happening. This knight's gone all the way to b6. But uh, now, you know, we're hitting with, uh, with g5 here. And obviously, you know, these knights are in um, a little bit of trouble here. So bishop takes h6, uh, g takes h6. Got this uh, this alpha zero pawn on h6 with uh, you know mate on g7 and the the black king restricted to the back rank um, and of course you know the dark squares are, are still very very weak here so knight f2 takes rook b6 played then you know dragon doesn't dream of uh, of taking the uh, the exchange uh, just queen takes f7 queen g5 king h2 rook e7 queen f3 queen h6 bishop d3 black spend all that time winning that uh, rook's pawn. But now the um, uh, you know the uh, the a pawn is going to start running and uh, yeah you know uh, this is still an incredibly unclear position. I mean uh, I'm not sure I'd avoid getting mated if I was uh, if I was white, but um, obviously Dragon is going to manage that and uh, and actually you know he just played beautifully for the rest of the game. Um, just uh, a really nice play here uh, h4. You know, bishop c5, which is a beautiful idea. I'll uh, I'll leave it there, right? But uh, the, what happened in the game was takes d6, and uh, you know we're opening up uh, this line and also coming uh, along here as well. So I mean, dragon won a, a really beautiful game there against uh, stockfish. Long time control, so um, yeah, pretty impressive, I have to say. Um, but. Um,
yeah, you, you can just see, yeah, there's there's definite danger there. And having the knight on d2 just gives white the opportunity to play, you know, all over the board. So, yeah, very, uh, very impressive there from uh, from Dragon. Um, Elena played knight h2. And now it starts getting really interesting. Uh, g6 had been played in a, um, in a, a human game before. Um, not such a distinguished one. Yeah, uh, I think it was also Stockfish's uh, main move, but uh, oh no, it was Dragon's main move. I think it was also mine. Uh, but um, uh, Stockfish wasn't particularly bothered about allowing the knight to f5. Now, not now that the the knight is over on h2. But uh, this was a novelty from uh, from Erebin. It's not the, but that's not the main part uh, to the game. The key part is after knight f5. Now this is the moment. Set yourselves, uh, set your up, as the Dutch say. Just. Um, Anchor yourselves because uh, this is where it's uh, it's uh, it's coming. Erwin played the move a4, and this is a really controversial move. Um, I believe that the uh, the Tata Steel commentary was very upset with Erwin for uh, for playing this, and um, you know I saw a number of comments on Twitter um, about uh, you know Grandmaster making a, a typical positional error. Um, you know, and what is that typical positional error? Well, you know, after the inevitable a3 in a in a human game, anyway, you know, black no longer seems to have much going for him on the queen side. I mean, uh, b5 to b4 is um, uh, looks pretty impossible. And what you're saying is, is that you know, if black doesn't have counterplay on the queen side, white is clearly better on the king side. There's nothing black can do on the king side, so you know, black's just basically positionally lost. And uh, you know. I thoroughly understand those uh, those feelings um, and that reasoning, and uh, you know, probably in the in the pre-computer age, um, I would have, uh, you know, if I was doing uh, annotations uh, to a game, I would have, uh, you know, probably said the same. Um, but you know, although you know, my my my, my grandmasterly instincts, my nineteen nineties <laughs> instincts, pre-computer, are are rebelling against the move. Um, it did also intrigue me an awful lot because um, uh, you know I've I've um, um, I'll put the you know the links to the videos in the in the comments. But you know I've I've looked at a lot of games now where um, you know engines make decisions about either am I able to close the wing and win the game on the other side, or am I able to close the wing. And hold the game on the other side because the opponent doesn't have enough uh, strength on that side. And um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of those games where I was thinking engine's completely wrong. And yet it really does work. It hangs together. That engine judgment about that was was perfect. Now, it's certainly not something that they do um, uh, flawlessly. So, you, you, I mean, it's always correct to question them. But uh, it's clear that, um, you know, there's there's stuff about block positions and strategy that humans you know, have a good, they have a good grasp about, you know, the dangers, but not always a very good grasp about the specifics about, you know, whether something really is dangerous or not. <coughs> and, uh, you know, when I looked at this uh, position with the engines, I was quite surprised about two things. First of all, you know, it wasn't their favourite move, but the evaluations were not dropping that much. They didn't consider it as a, <coughs> pardon me, a horrific positional blunder. And secondly, um, if you play through a number of lines, trying out a number of stuff, you do see this idea popping up from time to time in their main lines, like, uh, OK, A4, A3 now. So, I mean, clearly, you know, the, the engines don't consider this blocking of the queen side to be particularly dangerous. Actually, they consider that White's uh, chances for developing an initiative on the king side are not, not dangerous enough. <coughs> and, you know... Erwin is a really strong player. Uh, he's uh, um, obviously he's a grandmaster, twenty six, uh, you know, thirty, whatever. But I mean, you know, he's also extremely strong theoretician. He's uh, you know seconded um, some very very strong players as well. So, you know, he he knows what he's what he's what he's talking about. So you know, it didn't really seem to me that this would be a typical sort of uh, positional blunder that he made. If he had played this idea, he definitely had some, um, some, some thoughts in his head. And I'm pretty convinced that he, that he really did prepare this um, um, in some way, you know, uh, to some depth with, uh, with an engine. Um, only, I think maybe, you know, what he might have underestimated a little bit or, you know, taken the gamble and it didn't work out about, you know, the, the, the human uh, um, overhead in terms of trying to understand these lines and play them well. 
because uh, yeah, that is quite tricky. Simply, you know, and uh, and I think what you see in the game is that um, uh, yeah, Evan just doesn't quite manage to <laughs> to calculate the millions of lines necessary in order to really make it uh, hang together. But I think you know, to be honest, I don't think that the concept uh, can really be criticised uh, from a positional point of view objectively. You know, you might say, well, you know, in terms of human game, you're giving yourself a hell of a task here. But in terms of uh, uh, you know, true chess strategy, I'm not so sure. So um, after a4, um, a3 was played, king h8. Um, now there are a few different uh, ways of, um, of uh, organizing your pieces and uh, uh, Erwin goes straight for the line that, uh, that Leela preferred. Uh, the the development uh, the the defensive uh, setup and well I don't think that's coincidence um, uh, I may be uh, slandering uh, Erwin terribly but I, I'm pretty sure that uh, that uh, he did some serious work on this position so g4 from white all very typical knight c5 queen f3 not the engine's uh, favourite idea they were actually looking to play knight g3 um, anticipating uh, a later g6 and uh, you know preparing to play a move like king h2 rook h1 and then you know start pushing h and g pawn but queen f3 is a, a very normal natural move um, there's one thing maybe that um, you can slightly criticize it for is that you know the engines were looking very much at playing f4 and of course you know the queen sort of gets in the way so you know but uh, but again I don't, you know, I don't think you can criticize it at all I think it's a, a very natural move and now uh, Erwin plays uh, the move knight g8 which was uh, a defensive structure that uh, Leela was going for all the time um, Lila actually considers the very best move to be uh, g6 in this position, knight g3, um, bishop b7, followed by, um, you know, really going, uh, uh, sort of uh, um, consolidating yourself very much with rook g8 and, and rook f8. But actually, this move, knight g8, is um, um, is you know also one of the uh, one of the top lines. So it's um, a pretty good way of uh, of developing. And uh, you know, for a human, it's it's pretty natural, right? I mean, it feels very much like a Rubinsteinic sort of uh, sort of thing you know you're, you're going to play uh, g6 maybe f6 curl up in a ball and what you've also got which is quite a nice idea you could even consider at some stage playing uh, knight e7 to g6 and uh, aiming for this weak f4 square you know so that's completely possible too so um, g5 was played by uh, um, Elena um, again not necessarily the favorite uh, move of the engine but you know the, all the games uh, around here were still ending in draws for the engine so I think you know it's pretty clear that uh, there isn't a, a big you know uh, gap in this I might come back to this move just to show a big difference later um, but uh, yeah this is uh, uh, this is still all pretty good and but now is really where um, Ervin really diverges from um, from from Leela's play and uh, you know again if, if I was guessing, um, and I, again, I hope I'm not slandering uh, Erwin here, but if I was guessing, I would say that uh, he had looked at this with the engine and he had a certain defensive structure in mind, only that defensive structure was not good against the specific plan that uh, Elena chose. It would have been good against a lot of things, but it just wasn't good here. Um, the shocking thing about it is that, you know, there's really this orthodoxy, and that's something that, I, that uh, you know, very much in my head, that, uh, you know, when you're being attacked you avoid moving pawns on that side. You know, you really don't, you don't create weaknesses for the opponent to attack. You keep your pawns uh, um, uh, at home and, um, uh, and you don't do anything. Um, the question is, you know, what would you do then? And, uh, you know, in this position, uh, well, since Black's played this a5 to a4, then, um, uh, yeah, it just means that, um, uh, that, yeah, you, you, you can't really do that much on the queen's side. So, well, if you don't do anything on the king's side either, what are you going to do? But actually what's so striking is that all of the engines just decided that, you know, white wasn't completely mighty on the king's side yet. At the start of, uh, of this development, um, black has got just as many chances of striking back on the king's side as white. And uh, actually, you know, from that point of view, um, you know, closing the queen's side is great because, you know, white's got more space. So white, if anyone was, would be able to make use of both sides of the board, it would be white. So camping down on the queen's side and then hitting back at white on the king's side because white's not as strong there as, as, uh, as he thinks. You know, that was, the, uh, that was the engine idea. That was the Leela idea. And, um, yeah, you know, it just worked 
you know, very, very well in the um, in the games. But there's some incredible stuff to it. Let me just show you um, just a, a few games as we go along and you'll see what it all is. So bishop c8, rook d1, queen d8. Um, looks a little bit odd, but obviously, you know, this bishop is uh, developed here. We always do have a move like knight d3 giving up a pawn um, just to block this bishop if ever the diagonal gets uh, dangerous. And this queen d8, we'll see it a lot. This queen is uh, supporting f6 and also attacking the g5 pawn. So queen g2, we go knight d3, takes takes. Knight f1 from white, and here Leela wanted to play the move g6. Knight g3, bishop e7, attacking the pawn on uh, g5. And after knight h1, just remember this sort of thing because you're going to see it so much. Leela wanted to play this move, h6. And uh, yeah, you know, it's it's this sort of fighting back directly against the uh, the opponent's sort of attempted bind on the uh, on the king side without any seeming fear for your own king. You know, that is really the type of play that you need in order to play this position uh, properly. And, uh, you know, the key thing is, um, is that there's quite a bit of danger um, in the uh, in the white position as well. And um, I mean, I, I know this because, you know, I played a number of games against Leela at one node from various positions. And, uh, you know, I won all three games as black. Now, I mean, that's possible against Leela running at one node. But, you know, that normally shows that uh, if I'm able to trick Leela in, in three consecutive games like that, the position must hold danger as well. And, you know, I mean, look at the uh, look at the white king on G1. I mean, look at squares like F4. You know, the uh, the knight can aim there, uh, h5 to f4. Um, Weisscott doesn't really have a break on the queen side, so we don't have to worry about that. So, you know, it's it's unbelievably sharp, of course, and, you know, very, very dangerous. But, you know, um, um, all sorts of things were happening here. You know, in, in the games, it was just completely crazy. So, um, yeah, this is uh, Leela's game, about equal, according to Leela, you know, after uh, huge amounts of analysis. So, you know... It's uh, absolutely possible, but you've really got to... Well, I mean, first of all, you've got to overcome that orthodoxy about, uh, yeah, I shouldn't be moving pawns on my king side. And secondly, you've got to come up with some, some really creative ideas, you know, in order to be able to do it. G6 was played by Erbin, and that's not bad. It's his next move that really, um, yeah, really makes stuff uh, difficult for him. Um what Leela wanted to do, Leela wants to play um, f6 with the bishop on g7. That is the absolute key thing. Uh, the bishop has to be on g7 um, uh, if you're going to play this move f6. So, for example, uh, Leela came up with a few things. Oh, this is, uh, sorry, this is Stockfish against Dragon. Um, rook e7 was Dragon's line and then f6, just with the idea of going rook f7. And, uh, yeah, you're going to develop afterwards with bishop g7, with knight e7, and who knows, you might even play f5 together with knight d3. I mean, it could, you know, conceivably get very dangerous for um, for uh, for white. Um, another idea here was simply the move f6 straight away. Um, and, uh, um, yeah, if you take on f6, you can get that pawn back. Tactics. Uh, and uh, here you just go bishop c8, rook f1. Bishop h3, bishop d7, rook c8, queen f1, and, uh, you know, the game sort of continues. A lot less clear there, but uh, but still, you know, quite um, uh, quite restrained there. Um, the problem with bishop e7, um, the big problem with bishop e7, uh, so h4 played here, um, not the top move, but still, you know, still very good. The key problem is that actually your king is going is really in a lot of trouble. And there's a key point to it. The idea being that after rook f1, rook f8, let's just show this uh, this line of uh, of of, uh, um, of stockfishes. The point is that if you go something like e takes f4, I've always got this unbelievably unpleasant move, bishop d4, check. Uh, and then you have to go f6, and then I go rook takes f4. And then I'm coming in with, uh, with knight g4 and rook f1 and all of that. And, you know... What is your bishop doing on d8? If it was on g7, the whole thing makes sense. White is not going to break through at all. You know, you've always got tactical resources. But having put the bishop on, on e7, d8, none of this is working. And all of White's counterplay is huge. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is really the, the essential problem. I mean, Erin just got that one development of the piece wrong playing the bishop to e7. You know, Leela drops a slight disadvantage here, but Stockfish is, is, is claiming, you know, that black is lost already. You know, or 
I don't know, you know, like 80% winning chances for White, you know, try and hold that against Stockfish. So, you know, it's a really fundamental error against this specific way of playing from um, from uh, Elena. Yeah, you know, it's, um, it's uh, you know, I think, again, you know, I think objectively the line is, is pretty good for Black, you know, what uh, what Erin did here. But, um, but yeah, it's just so difficult, so difficult to, uh, to grasp properly. Um, so Rook F8 played. Um, I mean, actually, the engines, more or less with everything, were heading to the same thing. They want White to go Queen G2 and F4, and then Black's King is in trouble. Uh, but Elena actually um, uh, didn't do that. Um, Elena played a move. You know, when I saw it during the uh, the game, I thought, yeah, God, Ervin, oh, God, how bad. This is just going so badly. And it turns out that this is actually a, um, a mistake, you know. Um, but again, you know, it's Leela doing Leela stuff. Um, Leela wants to play the move Queen D8, hitting the pawn on G5 here. Queen G4, and then an absolutely gorgeous move. Um, maybe you want to pause the video, try and uh, you know spend some time thinking what you want to do, what you'd want to do in this position. I can tell you, I would not really have thought of this move. I'd, I'd, I'd only think of it if I was or if I was completely desperate. I think you know, and uh, I certainly wouldn't be imagining that it was fine for me. But Leela just wants to play H6 in this position, and um, you know the idea is simply that uh, um, well, if you take on H6, for example, Bishop C8. Queen f3, we go knight f6, and uh, well, this knight is going to come round to h7, and, and maybe you go bishop to g5 after to uh, swap off the dark squared bishops, or you just play uh, g6 to g5 and block up the king side. And well, the queen side is blocked up as well. How are you ever going to get through? Nobody knows. Um, and yeah, I mean, this game was uh, dragon against uh, stockfish here. So knight f3, bishop c8, queen h4, knight b3, rook d1, and then this gorgeous move f6 here. Um, hg fg takes king g7 knight f5 takes takes knight f6 and i'm sorry um uh, you can do all you want but you're not going to break through this it's just going to be a complete draw so you know from the black point of view in terms of playing for a win not so great but uh, as a theoretical uh, um you know a judgment on uh, on the line uh, you know not bad at all so yeah, this move h5 was was actually a mistake. It was, uh, you know, the key point, the key break to aim for was f4 straight away. That was the key one with that king tucked away on the on the corner there. Um, yeah, I mean, it, now it starts getting quite difficult for uh, for Erwin. But again, you know, what you needed to do uh, was again fight against that king side. Uh, it's either f6 or it's h6 uh, um, in this specific position. Uh, Leela's move also. Uh, a Komodo Dragon's move, um, and also Stockfish's move, of course. Um, Knight F3, we've got all sorts of ideas. They, they like this idea of just giving up the uh, the pawn. I mean, the nice thing is, you know, is that these uh, two pawns here, um, on B5 and uh, and A4, they are um, restricting the, um, you know, the white queenside pawns, the three white queenside pawns. So actually, giving a pawn away doesn't really matter at all, and it's the weak light squares, you know, that are, that are important. And now, you know, Stockfish was, uh, um, well, the engines were going for this line. Having, um, you know, sort of uh, challenged the king's side, having got that light square bishop, now you start fighting for the, um, um, yeah, for, for the initiative. And, uh, well, yeah, I mean, this position, pretty sharp, really. You know, white's going to end up a pawn up. Uh, H6 is obviously going to go. But, yeah, I mean, um, hard to see how white's really going to make a convincing breakthrough. You might even think, you know, I'm, I'm sure if I was black in this game, uh, playing somebody uh, a little bit weaker than me, I'd still be thinking, oh, you know, can I get some sort of win somehow? You know, it's that sort of position, really. But again, I mean, you're, you're having to overcome, you know, really all your uh, all your preconceptions, uh, you know, by, by playing like this. And yeah, you know, it's also, uh, yeah, it also, you know, costs an awful lot of effort in, uh, in calculation during an over the board game. So F4 played, Queen H3. Uh, Queen F3 seems a slight mistake by uh, the engines. They wanted Queen G2, just... Um, you know, heading for the end game. Um, and I mean, you know, I think it's a very natural move, right? I mean, uh, you've got an active piece, passive piece, swap off the active pieces for the passive pieces, for, sorry, swap off your passive pieces rather for the active pieces and leave the opponent only with passive pieces. You know, it's typical alpha zero uh, um, engine uh, paradigm. And uh, yeah, this is just, you know, just a very nice uh, end game position for white. But um, Queen F3 played, um, and now E takes F4. And, uh, you know, when I saw it being played, I assumed that this was, uh, you know, um, uh, just, you know, 
normal human desperation had to be done somehow somewhere um, but the engines just think this position is virtually equal um, you know so uh, they just want to play um, knight d3 takes takes so you know get rid of that knight squared bishop and uh, the key point is that if you go f5 you know and it looks really strong you just go f6 you're fighting back on the king side again and uh, well you know you might worry that your queen might get trapped on h3 but uh, the engines aren't so yeah it probably isn't happening i guess um so yeah again that was you know very very interesting moment but e takes f4 played and um uh yeah now you know the the sheer horror of um of um of, of this deployment uh with the bishop on e7 and the king on h8 uh yeah becomes uh, becomes manifest because uh, elena played the super strong move bishop d4 check um f6 and queen f4 uh the engines point out uh, that bishop f6 even was possible because obviously you've got this attack on here but yeah queen f4 um takes takes knight b3 rook d1 is again you know very very strong for uh for, for wide but it's just that with a move like f6 i could imagine this being a bit confusing in a in a human game you know uh, engines don't get too confused but uh this is this would have been a really good fighting chance i think um because you know obviously bishop d4 f6 qualitatively this this bishop here is way better than this bishop on here and uh and obviously getting rid of a <laughs> getting rid of a piece that's um uh that's pointing towards your king is 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 generally quite good but uh yeah queen f4 knight d7 rook e3 i mean uh, uh elena played this very very strongly i mean uh now this queen really is getting into trouble knight e5 knight f5 yeah this this stage was played very very well by elena just uh no fear just going in and uh you know uh just uh, killing all the uh, all the uh, all the black defenders, um, and the key idea is if knight g8, you just go f7, and uh, you're going to pick up a piece because knight e7 um, is just met by um, by queen f6 checkmate there. So um, yeah, I mean here Erin went into a bit of desperation mode here, and uh, well yeah, um, it uh, um, it didn't turn out great, but it might have done, funnily enough. So takes takes um, bishop d6 check hard to resist although maybe bishop takes f4 was uh, was even stronger takes and rook a7 and you know to be honest I had already written this uh, this game off so um, I wasn't paying much attention but um, uh, I just um, you know I, I just looking through my engine games I suddenly started seeing draws after the next move king h1 uh, you know what's happening here but um, king h1 was played by Lena um, actually rook g3 was the best uh, crucially giving the bishop a nice way of uh, regrouping and also stopping any checks on the g-file because after king h1 from elena actually rook f7 would have been very unpleasant um the key idea, key point is that there's no there isn't really a great square for this bishop where it's not getting sort of hit and uh and um and attacked and of course you know if the if the rook manages to get into f2 then that's rather awkward so i mean bishop g3 looks completely natural and, and you know i wouldn't think that there's anything wrong with this uh, setup but after queen g5 we're hitting the rook um yeah how do you defend this rook knight f1 um i've just got uh, rook takes f1 check so you know that's not uh, going to be good so um white plays rook a e1 and now h5 and uh yeah black's just going to go um uh, h4 here and it's just really awkward for um for uh, for white you know white just finds it very hard to to do anything bishop d6 we'd, we, we'd, we're playing a move like i guess rook f2 <coughs> maybe even h4 first you know just to uh, uh just to cover g3 and stop um stop white from putting something on g3 you know it's it's just really really awkward and uh, yeah as i said you know all the engine games i had from now uh, were ending in draws so yeah i don't know i'm not i don't know what to say really i mean uh, just uh, goes to show that uh, <coughs> even when your opponent's playing as well as lena did you know unexpected opportunities occur as long as you keep on playing actively and uh, well you know Erin got very very close to to finding a miracle resource there but he played rook g7 which was quite uh, obvious but um, yeah this move rook g1 was very nice you know just very sensible move you swap off some pieces and yeah there's just no more attack for uh, for white so Erin played a couple more moves but uh, actually just exchanging off the pieces was was perfect and uh, and Erin resigned here those d and e pawns are just going through you might get a b and an a pawn but it's never going to be enough so there we are i mean i thought this was a fascinating game and actually you know i think it, it's it might even be a an absolutely critical game in terms of uh, of understanding uh, 
yeah, strategy in general, playing on both wings, and also Lopez strategy in general. I mean, you know, my conclusion is that this plan A5 to A4, uh, it carries uh, what I always call, uh, you know, a very high cognitive load um, for black um, because, uh, you know, playing... You know, obviously, you narrow White's channel of attack on the King's side. That makes it more difficult. But also, you know, you narrow your own channels of, of defensive resources. And uh, playing, you know, riskily, opening up stuff when your King's nearby is, is quite difficult. But, um, um, but I can, you know, I think it's a very fine idea. And to be honest, you know, the number of games um, where you saw, uh, you know, the engines... Uh, if you didn't play this A5, A4 idea, where you saw the engines, uh, you know, playing um, uh, um, on the queen side um, as well as the king side, you know, it really made you appreciate this A5, A4 idea. I can just show you one example, for example, uh, after G6, instead of uh, Erwin's novelty, queen D2, knight C5. Um, I think that the move um, B4 here, yeah, was very, very popular with the engines. You know, takes, takes. So why not trying to do anything on the king side here now, but switching to the queen side? And, you know, just think, I don't know if, if any of you are Lopez players, I'm sure you remember, you know, this magnificent game uh, of Karpov against uh, uh, Wolfgang Unzika, Olympiad, uh, Nice 1974. I'll just show you the position after Bishop A7, this move, Bishop A7. But again, you know, white opened up the queen side, got this huge advantage, um, you know, completely stopped black from doing anything with this bishop on a7 and doubled rooks, and then afterwards just played the move f4, breaking on the king's side. It was playing on both wings, you know, that, um, that was absolutely decisive. So, you know, this whole idea for black of, um, um, of playing the pawn a5 to a4, and uh, stopping White from um, from uh, uh, having any queenside play, and then neutralising the play with very you know dynamic and uh, and aggressive play on the king side, you know really we meeting the White attack head on, you know that's that's maybe just um, a really good strategy. And uh, you know the interesting thing as well was that uh, it turned out that this this queenside structure wasn't as dead as all that because you know there were a lot of places where um you know the engines played uh, knight c5 to b3 uh, and then afterwards just played this um this b4 break uh, anyway you know just to uh, um just to uh, um yeah to somehow uh, yeah just, just somehow making it all happen you know to uh, to break on the on the queen side despite all that uh, you know the fact that it looked impossible i, I was just uh, looking I'd, I'd earmarked a few things but i couldn't find it in the mass of variations but for example in this position black's played knight b3 white had to take on uh, b3 and now black just plays the move b4 and uh, and breaks through and there's there's more like that you know so yeah you know it's not quite as dead as uh, as you think somehow so um yeah, I mean, I'm not quite sure what to make of it, really. And, you know, still uh, struggling to think, you know, would I be, do I think I could manage this with black? Do I think that would actually work for me? But, you know, I mean, uh, do be aware of this, that, uh, you know, this, uh, um, not, it's not an automatic reaction for me anymore uh, now um, to say, oh, that's just a bad positional move. It really, you've really got to understand very deeply what you can do on the opposing side against White's uh, initiative. It might just turn out to be objectively, you know, the very best strategical move. So, um, yeah, really, really interesting. I mean, I hope you enjoyed it too. It, it really, I've spent, uh, you know, this game happened a couple of weeks ago. I've just spent, uh, yeah, actually those those two weeks, you know, every evening I've been, uh, you know, looking at lines and trying to understand it and uh, really fascinated me. So, you know, again, thanks to um, to Elena and uh, Erevin for playing such a game. You know, um, super game from uh, Elena, really showing, uh, you know, huge amount of talent for uh, for somebody so young and uh, well i mean you know thanks again to ervin for trying out such a concept and uh, you know being brave enough to do that in uh, in the game because i think you know i think he was i'm pretty sure he was thoroughly aware of the risks and uh, but yeah you know dared to do it and i think that's what uh, it's what makes chess uh, worthwhile somehow so uh, so there we are you know if you enjoyed that game long video i'm afraid but hopefully not too painful if you enjoyed it if you enjoyed the annotations why not like the uh, the video or subscribe to the channel take a look at my new course, The Silicon Road to Chess Improvement. And, uh, well, I've been giving some masterclasses on how to prepare with engines. Basically, how do I create videos like this? How do I, you know, get so much, uh, you know, together so much understanding from working with engines? Those are the masterclasses. There might be some, uh, you know, along, uh, coming along soon as well. So uh, do keep your eyes peeled. 
And uh, otherwise, you know, thanks very much for watching. And um, yeah, hope to see you at the next video. Thanks very much.